Hello, everybody. Welcome to another uh, chat here today, another podcast uh, of Let's Talk, um, your podcast where we talk to uh, models, co content creators, OnlyFans stars. We do it all here. Um, and I'm very happy today because uh, the person that we're talking to today, uh, this is actually his second visit here. Last time he was here, we didn't have time to do this, but he's here today. And his name is Georgie. Say hi, Georgie. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? And I'm just kidding. Great to it's just, be here. Yeah, it's just George. Not just George, but his name is George. You call me Georgie. I'm Georgie? Okay. Yeah, it's my second time here. Great to be back. Thank you so much, Carlos. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, we did a bunch today. We uh, Actually, we shot yesterday and today, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. both days. Today was a little bit more. Um, we suited him up to make him look pretty, so he kept everything on, and now he's here. Appreciate looking that. Looking dapper. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get started with uh, some questions. I'm going to put you on the stand here and, and get to get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Um, while he's here, we've talked a lot, and so I, I know him pretty well, but there are still some things that I forget about and some things that um, he'll tell me, and I get it confused with other people. Like, when he got back, I was like, didn't you play baseball? And, like, he went to another school, and then it, you couldn't get in. I was like, right? And he's like, no, that wasn't me. I played football. So tell us about your football career. Um, I played football my whole childhood. Um, grew up in Phoenix, Arizona in the heat. And I loved doing it every year. Uh, I always wanted to play football and I had an aspiring professional career for it for a long time. And uh, Tell I, them about how, how you played in high school. I played in high school as a three-year starter in the Valley and uh, enjoyed every minute of it. Love and miss all my teammates, every, every single one of them. And... Uh, then I stepped away from football after high school and got into martial arts for a little while. And then I realized I could walk on to a junior college because I had never been a full-time collegiate athlete or student. So uh -huh. my time clock for collegiate sports had never started, I guess. So I started emailing schools down up and down the coast of Southern California trying to figure out. Because how could... old were you at this time? I was 24. Okay. So it had so, been yeah. about six years since high school that I'd been, that I'd taken off from football as well. And uh, I got a hold of like, three different schools in along the coast. And uh, one of them, you know, they ended up reaching out to me and like giving me a chance with their spring training and uh, for like two days. And so I went out there and I worked out with them and they were like, yeah, well, if you can figure out how to live out here by the time school starts, then you could play. And I was like, okay, I really want to do this. And right. so I was fortunate enough to have some of my family members help me out, kind of sponsor me to do it. Yeah. And then and, what uh, happened? So I was at, I was out there for two years and I gray shirted the first year and kind of got some grades in check and kind of just like uh, played on the scout team and tried to prove myself. And then the next year I was a gray shirt freshman and I got a starting position as a gunner on the kickoff team. Uh -huh. And we had a great season. We won a bowl game and stuff. It was awesome. And then my sophomore year was going to be in 2020 and yeah. I was going to compete for a defensive back position. But unfortunately, COVID halted the efforts uh there was no junior college football in 2020 so they kind of stopped it yeah and my like i said my family was helping me with everything even financially and no no one knew what was going to happen you know right. what i mean so it was just kind of like hang up the cleats moment kind of a downer you know but i always knew that maybe it happened for a reason and you know there's always can be something that becomes of that you right know, you just gotta keep putting the right foot forward and allow allow yourself to see things in that light yeah you know? a little bit differently yeah well i mean think about it. if that hadn't happened you wouldn't be here right now absolutely that's so, what i mean yeah so. so what uh tell the tell tell us like what inspired you to kind of get into football and if has that been something that's been in your family the whole time yeah i was inspired to uh play football originally i was inspired to play football because i just wanted to be an athlete from watching movies and things like that and uh I, my mom made me get into a sport because I got into a little bit of trouble in first grade in Catholic school. Oh, gosh. And I, I kind of got kicked out of Catholic school in first grade, <laughs> which wasn't good. But What kind of trouble? Uh, I got into a little scuffle with uh, another classmate, and it wasn't okay with mm. the school, you know. And it was kind of funny because my cousins went there. I had two female cousins that were um, older than mm -hmm. me, and mm -hmm. they graduated. They went there all the way through eighth grade, and, like, one of my cousins, her aunt um, on her dad's side uh, was like a sec secretary of the office and stuff. So like my family was like a part of the school. The whole thing. And they, and they were like, like, oh, you know, man, George. Yeah. <laughs> is, 
is this one of those those things where you're like, oh man, I'm really glad I got kicked out of Catholic school, or is it kind of a thing where you're like, I kind of wonder what it was like if I finished it out there? Um, yeah, well, you know, I've gone back to the church since then. It's a Catholic school, and uh, I uh, definitely have thought about that. But it's one of those things again where it was like, you know, maybe things happen for a reason. And I have a lot of friends from the past that I grew up with from public school that I, after I left uh, first grade that I met that I feel like. I'm very happy I know and things like that. So it's kind of, you know, both both uh, directions with that. But going back to the uh, to the question, though, I uh, was I was in Catholic school and I was inspired to play sports from just from being into like athletics and getting into that trouble. My mom made me go into a sport. Right, right, right. But then I found out the next year that my mom did that for a reason, because my dad for my birthday gave me. Uh, his dad's draft notice, my grandfather played for the Green Bay Packers in the 1950s. It's crazy. Yeah, so I was given his like a copy of his draft notice that my grandma had made a copy of and uh, as a gift for my birthday, yeah. So I immediately became a Packers fan. Yeah, you're like, yeah, I'm that's, in it. That's Sorry if you hate the Packers. Yeah. <laughs> it's 50 50 split. You'll be okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so you're just so, you know, you kind of took time off um, and then you, you know, got to school or whatever. And you were doing really good, and then COVID hit, which sucks. So this is kind of at the point where you're like, you have to decide, like, what am I going to do? Am I going to stay here and wait it out, or am I going to go back home, mm-hmm. or you know, what what do I do next? So how did you make that decision, and what did you what did you decide? Um, well, what happened with me was the government they offered people an unemployment assistance, and they included students. Mm. And I was a student athlete, and so since my athletics were halted um, and I didn't know what was going to happen with COVID, I just saw that as my best route. So I took some unemployment assistance, and that was another route that kind of uh, was like maybe it happened for a reason as well because I took a large portion of the assistance and I put it as a down payment on a vehicle, on a van. Right. And so I got a new like road tripping vehicle that I still have that I wouldn't have been able to get without that assistance from the state. Yeah. And so now I'm able to travel easier and and do my work easier that's going on now and things like that. And so Did you see that was up? another plus. Uh not really. I mean, I I fixed up the inside a little bit, made it a little more homey and uh cuz it's like a it's one of those high roof cargo vans that you can like stand up in. So oh, okay. it's pretty cool. I love it. But I did that, and I got a landscaping job with a private landscaping company in Long Beach with some really cool guys. This guy in Long Beach that owns this private company, I don't want to say his name, but he he's a really awesome guy. He's in his 50s and from there, and he, like, helped me out so much. He did so much for me in that time, that confusing time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was out of state, and I wanted to stay in California, and I wanted to kind of try to do my own thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. So, so, so grateful for that guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you're there doing all the landscaping stuff, how long did it take before you decided that you had to change? Um, I was landscaping for about 20 months, mm-hmm. I want to say, almost two years. And uh, I just kind of got tired of it. And I actually got in contact with one of my closest friends from Phoenix that I hadn't talked to in a few years since moving out there. Mm-hmm. And he was like, hey, man, uh, when are you coming out to visit again? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to come out on spring break because I miss you guys and I want to say what's up. And so I went out uh, spring break. I went back out to Phoenix and my friend was doing really well. He was working at like a comedy club and was like top server there. And he was like, I want to introduce you to one of my friends that I wouldn't know if it wasn't for you because you showed me this other high school to go to at the, yeah, end, yeah. At the end of my like high school career or whatever. And I ended up going there and meeting him, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so he introduced me to... My friend Bryson Kyle, if you guys know who that is. Yeah. And uh, we became friends. And Bryson is is uh, an awesome dude. He's the one who got me started on TikTok and things like that. And he's a really cool guy, a really good friend of mine. He's done a lot for me. Yeah. And uh, I'm forever grateful for that guy. So so, <clears throat> so that's, that's the next thing that I want to get into. So you started doing TikToks, right? Mm-hmm. And how long ago was that? Uh, I started doing TikToks roughly... Let's see, it's December. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was two Marches ago, so... So about a year and a half ago, almost. Almost, so two, almost years two years ago, yeah. 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 Like 20 months. 20 months, yeah. And so what, uh, 
what is the TikTok for? Like, uh, do you advertise? Like, I know you do OnlyFans, obviously. What is this, is that kind of a way to kind of get people to your OF? Um, yeah, I mean, you could say that. I don't necessarily like. I like to just have fun on TikTok and and things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's all connected. I I have a. I have an account on eight different platforms that I operate and yeah. I have a mainstream line of content that is basically TikToks that I distribute through almost all my platforms. Uh -huh. But then I, each platform has a unique branch of content to it, at least at least a branch, if not multiple, that kind of gives you a unique experience for that for that platform. So whether it's Facebook, Snapchat, Threads, yeah, it Twitter, will get something. Uh, yeah, there's, like I said, most of them have like the TikTok, the mainstream line of TikTok content, reels, whatever you want to call it. But then they also have their own unique branch for a unique experience. That way you're not just getting the same thing. You right. Know what I mean? Right. Yeah. 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 Um, well, uh, what would you say is your favorite TikTok? Because I know what mine is. My favorite TikTok? Yeah. Oh my like gosh. One that you shot that you're like, this is the good one. This is the one I'm going to pin to the top. Um, it's actually, uh. <laughs> the one I'm thinking of is no longer up. It's got taken down, but one that's up that I like. Let me think about this. I can't even think on this. I know I put you on the spot. I just like the Zelda music. That's my favorite one. <laughs> yeah, those that one's yeah. That those that sounds been viral the, forever. Ding 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 ding. Yes, that's my favorite one. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go back a little bit now, just before we get into the. OnlyFans stuff. We're going to go back. So when you were in high school, um, obviously, you know, you're a good looking guy. Were you, you. were you, um, like, did a lot of girls like you? Like, were you popular? You know, were they, because I remember we we're talking about how they would like kind of talk about your ass all the time. Oh, yeah. That's, it's funny. Like, I kind of said that in a way that was like kind of like victimizing earlier, which, I didn't necessarily feel that way in high school. You know, I felt like I was kind of a popular guy, but I knew I had people had strong opinions about me, good right. and bad, you know? And well, you also kind of said, I mean, you're not the same person that you were in high school, obviously. But, like, in high school, I mean, it's a different, you're you're young, you know, a little cocky, probably. I was a competitive athlete in a contact sport since the age of seven, and I yeah. was very, like, determined and serious about it, and I attached it to my identity yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah. So it's safe to say I was an egotistical person yeah, yeah. as a youngster. But, uh, you know, I've lightened up in ways as I've gotten older. I'm still an athlete. I still train martial arts. Um, but I'm a, I'm a different person than I was in high school. Right, right. Yeah. So, so okay, so back to the girls. Like, did you have a girlfriend? Were you, like... Uh... I had the most beautiful girlfriend in the school. Did in you high really? School. Yes. Yes? Absolutely. <laughs> Good job. Um, and how long did you guys date for? Uh, we dated for two years. Nice. Because you're the star quarterback, right? No, or no. The, the... Actually, my friend I grew up with was the star quarterback, and his dad was a coach, and he had a really great career. Yeah. It was rigged. Yeah, it was rigged. <laughs> <laughs> you should well they knew it hey i mean he performed so yeah what was your what was your position again i played linebacker okay i wish you would have said wide, wide receiver oh yeah that would have been a lot more fun i had a, I had a friend <laughs> i grew up with as well that was a very good wide receiver one of the best in the state <laughs> my favorite so listen so yeah you're in high school right having some fun and you get noticed a lot for a certain part of your body and, and what part would that be yeah, I grew up playing football, and, uh, you know, in, in football, you wear tight pants, and a lot of people had some things to say about my... Um, Your cat? My behind, my cat. <laughs> Your buns, hun. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. You made those anacondas run. So, so <laughs> did you get teased for this? Um, I don't necessarily know if I, if people, like, openly teased me. Uh-huh. Um, you know... I, I don't feel like it was like that, but I feel like it was kind of behind the scenes and like, you know, every now and then someone would say something or like a female would say something and then and then there would be people around that would be laughing or like no hesitation would like be be right there with a reaction like, right. you know, everyone's thinking it type thing. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Little did they know the future oh. of that ass. Do you think you'd call Little it your greatest asset? <laughs> I think I'm, it might be. <laughs> you know? Well, you didn't sound like that yesterday when I, when I had you doing a po that pose on the ground on your stomach. For some reason, that pose I looked like I had a, like a pancake butt there. <laughs> I didn't really like it. 
No, no offense. I mean, there's some people out there that rock that logo and it looks good, but not me. It wasn't looking good. There's a time and a place for it. I think it looked fine. You have too much body dysmorphia, I think. You think? <laughs> Just a little. So, okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> So. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Um, No, I, I'm an only child. So that explains a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know what? I had a dog that was like a brother growing up that I miss very dearly. Oh yeah, Let's, what's that? Rest what was the dog's name? Baron. Like? Baron, that's right. Baron Copper. What was what was his claim to fame? You were telling me a little bit. His claim to fame was uh, he's not. He will bite you. He, yeah, <laughs> you had to watch out. Like he was loving and he was, he was very loyal to our family. Uh huh. But I had a lot of friends that came over. My mom was the best mom I could have asked for growing up. She raised me. And worked very hard all through my childhood and spoiled me to death. Mm -hmm. And Baron was like my brother. And I got him when I was four years old for having 20 gold star days in a row in preschool. Dang. And, yeah, he died the day after Christmas when I was 16. <sighs> His last full day was Christmas. He hung on. He knew he knew it was Christmas. And he was just yeah. eating bones the whole day, <laughs> hanging on. I love you, Baron. But, uh, but, yeah. But he would roughhouse with you. His claim to fame was... Don't get rough. I'll hang out with everybody, and this will be fun. But if you cross the line with me, you're you're gonna get gotten. <laughs> he bit several people, and it was not good. And but like, well, don't fuck with him. But everybody knew it was like a thing. It was like, you know, Baron doesn't just bite you. <laughs> he you for ask for it. Yeah. <laughs> That's you perfect. ask for it. Okay, so um, so then you did have a brother. I mean, I I understand that. Believe me, because I have a child dog also. Mm -hmm. So um. You grew up, and so you were pretty lucky, right? Because your you your mom was pretty good. You lived with your mom. You were real close with your grandparents. Yeah. So yep. you had a pretty full life. You were telling me a story about how, um, because we were watching Fell Army. Mm -hmm. Remember, we were talking about when you went skiing. Yes. Yes. How old were you? I was eight years old, and I went skiing up in the Sunrise, Arizona, and my grandma, my dad's mother, and my mo my mom uh, were there with me, and they were watching me from inside the ski lodge. And I was making it a point, like I, you know, I wanted to be alone, alone powerful, to do this yeah. on my own. And I went on the ski lift, and I knew they were watching me, and I was kind of just, you know, acting calm and doing my own thing. But I looked over the edge like this at my skis, and uh, the next person got on, and the ski lift kind of jolted, <laughs> and there I went over the edge of the of the ski lift oh and, and I God. grabbed on like this with one hand and kind of like turned around towards it and was hanging by one hand and I knew I could hold on but there's no way I was pulling myself back up and we're only going higher and farther yeah, it's not getting yeah. lower so I just let go because I was like this is the <laughs> this is the best I could get you know what I mean <laughs> well, out of the snow. situation <laughs> and, uh, it was luckily powder like yeah. still like right yeah. there when you take off so i just sunk down like three feet <laughs> and the guy runs over like you know what i mean i'm assuming and hits the button or whatever because the thing and went like a couple swinging. seconds more than stopped <laughs> everything everybody's swinging on the top because they had to <laughs> yeah and then uh yeah and then the next guys are like i can like see their like legs kind of like i can see him right there like they're coming up but they, he stopped it and he comes over. He's like, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm totally fine. Like, it was whatever. And uh, my mom was telling me later that she was freaking out from inside. But my grandma was just laughing and was like, it's powder. He's fine. They'll dig him out. <laughs> They'll dig him out. <laughs> that, that is, it's like my, one of my greatest fears. She's life. a real one. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't very high, luckily, because I, I had just gotten on and yeah. I made the smart decision. Yeah. I mean, if you stayed on there, some of those, those, those heights, it's like 100, 200 feet above like packed ground. snow mm -hmm. and that's just like concrete it's terrible yeah maybe i would attribute my decision on the fly making to having played a season or two of pop Warner football already but <laughs> i kind of just said this is my best shot right here to just <laughs> let go all i can do it's your money shot yep that is yep so okay so i don't know i just i like that story i think it's pretty funny um but that's cool because your family's super supportive they've always been very supportive of you and so you moved back to arizona and that's where you uh, your friend introduced you to Bryson Kyle, and little did you know that Bryson was blowing up on TikTok at the time that you met him, correct? Yeah, he uh, he kind of, they, I kind of had a gist of what was going on in a way because he, my buddy that introduced me to him told me that he was, uh, had a social media presence and was doing well with it, and uh, 
that he knew him before that had happened and uh he wanted me to meet him that's pretty much all i knew and then when i met when i met Ryson, i came to his home and i didn't know that that he owned the home and i didn't know like the situation at all but i came to learn as i was sitting there talking to him that he was doing really well like in that way yeah and then he told me what he was doing and i was like wow like that's pretty it's pretty simple seeming in a way yeah and also maybe seemingly doable like yeah. i thought maybe you know i wanted to give it a shot and it seemed fun either way to meet someone new with that kind of energy to them that was having mm -hmm. fun in life you yeah. know what i mean cuz i had just come out of like my dreams being crushed from covid and then having to be a private landscaper and not knowing anybody and just working hard every day right. doing that and just hoping you know my life be has be some excitement yeah. becomes of my life in yeah. some way you know what i mean and so it was just refreshing to come back and see friends and see them doing good and to see opportunities even being put on the table. I was like, this is totally what I'm about to do. I just want to have fun in life. You know right, what I mean? Right. I just want to be have a young spirit and connect with people and have a fun time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I just started doing it. It's not like it was really even an expectation from it. I knew Bryson was doing well and stuff, but it was kind of like, I just, this is where I want to be now. You know what I mean? Right. And have so, so uh, did you asked Bryson for help or like, how did that conversation go? Like, you're well, he, he has, we have a group of friends that we all uh, work together. I mean, I have like a group that I kind of do business with, but also I'm friends with. Right. And, uh, I kind of, they're in a private like chat group, mm -hmm. uh, through text message. And he just basically added me to that is probably the main thing that I would say has been like the informative, like educational part of it, not just the fun. Yeah. Absolutely. And we all talk every day and we've all consistently been in a chat group together this whole time and everybody helps everybody. Yeah. And it's, it's honestly really cool. I got, even got to go out to Tampa Bay when uh, Bryson was living out there for a little bit. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, I met his roommate out there who's in the group now as well, who's from there. And uh, I met his girlfriend as well. And we all went out to the casino and to some dinners and went out to uh, Ebor to the yeah. bar hopping scene, which was fun and crazy. And uh, yeah, I've had so many cool experiences already. So right. Life changing. Yeah. Without a doubt. So what, uh, so when you're in this group uh, with Bryson, when did they kind of tell you that? Cause did you know that he had an only fans when you, when you met up with him the first time or was it something that he brought up to you afterwards? Um, I'm not exactly sure if I remember how that went. I know I just knew that he was doing TikToks, I think, if I remember correctly, and that he had a big presence with that. I yeah. don't think we necessarily got fully into detail right away. Right. But if, I so, wanted to do it. I wanted to do the TikToks and see because I knew that just getting getting following getting a following in general can be an opportunity. Yeah. And, and I itself. knew there was some I knew there was something to it, but right. I wasn't positive. And I don't even think I was really that well informed or versed on how big OnlyFans was even at that time. Right. You know, I was by myself in California, uh, you know, chasing a dream in, in junior college football and that totally focused on that. Yeah. And then COVID the happened and I was totally distracted by that. Right. And I didn't really understand everything that was going on. I didn't even really know what TikTok was. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. For a moment there. But I've always had an Instagram and things like that. But I think... You know what happened was there was like there was MySpace. Yeah, remember MySpace? <laughs> <clears throat> oh my gosh, MySpace! And then uh, what was the song that you played on your page? I had like Please four, me, like, and I had like or... an order of them too, and it mattered. Like <laughs> the top one was the top one. Yeah, you listen to the top one. That's my number one song. That's it. Okay? This isn't just willy nilly in any order. And sometimes like you have four of them, and like you, there's a sequence. There's like a story to it. Yes. You know, uh, to your expression of your playlist. That was cool about MySpace. So like, what was the song though? I can't remember what my songs were. It had to have been like some emo type of thing. Uh, Please you know, I went through phases. <laughs> That's like where they started. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember them. Yeah, I went through some phases with different bands. I know that I loved some Forty One. Oh yes. yeah, yes. Um, you know what I mean? That was a great band that I listened to a lot. Uh, I like some punk rock like that and stuff. So I would say. You know, in too deep probably was on my playlist. Yes, did iconic. You, did you ever get some like Incubus in there? Third Eye Blind. Oh yeah, Incubus. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, both those bands. Yeah. Isn't that funny how we used to decorate that page like it was like this? It mean it yeah. meant business. 
It did. And then you had to vlog. You had to like say what you did that day. And hey, you know, uh, say what you will about MySpace, but all this bullshit about your Instagram aesthetic or your TikTok feed, like MySpace was where people learned how to build an aesthetic on a blog. Right. Mm-hmm. That's where it all came from. That's where it sure, starts. Yeah. Yes. AOL was just horny people in chat rooms. <laughs> AIM. That. AIM. That was right. where it started. <laughs> AIM. <laughs> that's so funny. No, I, I have a horror story about AIM. Uh-oh. I want to hear tell it. Us, tell us. You want to hear us. it? I do. Please. This is so Can sad. Can I do it the monster way. voice? Can I do it in the, the monster voice? <sighs> it's a sad story. Oh, oh man. How's, but 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 we, can, we can do whatever you guys want, but... <laughs> Oh, this is the thing. <laughs> Be careful when you Stop. are talking to people online. Yes. You do, yeah. You know what I mean? But how old were you when this happened? So I was a little kid. I was like five, five or six. Oh, and uh, I had a babysitter. Stop it. Oh, no. <laughs> it's funny, but this is a, I'm serious, this is a it's dark, a, sad story. A, you I'm can't scared. say that I'm because like now we're going to laugh even more because it's dark and scary. Do, do we need to get like the bleep button for any of this? <laughs> well, he might laugh. I'm no. not a terrible person. Okay. All right. So finish. You're, it's it's a dark night. So AIM. There was no yes. visuals on AIM. It was just digital conversation, right? right. Like uh, letters. Right. You got it's like a, a username, correct? Yeah. You had a username yeah. and you had t- uh, typing. Yes. You would send over to each other. Right. And I had a babysitter whose mom worked with my mom. And she was like 18, 19. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like five or six. And I remember her distinctly because there was one time I got very sick and I was like throwing up in the toilet and she was totally like super empathetic towards me i was embarrassed and she was totally like nice to me and like helped me and like i remember i was being embarrassed about that so i always remembered her but uh what happened to her was she thought she met someone online that wanted to date or like like meet up and she went to a house party quote unquote to meet up with this guy and she showed up and it was a house full of men oh wow waiting for her and they kidnapped her and took her to la and uh, they turned her into a prostitute. That is oh so fucked up. Yeah, and oh. it was like two years. Oh my God. Yeah, and two years into it, she was, the, I guess, one of the people used to put a pillow over their head and suffocate them to like do wrongful yeah. things to them. Yeah. And she pretended to be passed out for long enough to where the guy stopped and he like got distracted and went somewhere else for a second. And she ran over to the window and opened up and hopped out oh and fell God. two floors and was totally naked and ran down the street screaming for help. And someone finally helped her, like, however so long down crazy. the road. Oh, my God. And she uh, got rescued finally. But she had, like, her teeth were all chipped. She had tattoos everywhere, bruises. Were they, like, consensual tattoos? Or did they, like, do it No, for this her? is, like. No, they were, like, yeah, like, property so of. Scary. Yeah. Oh, my fucking So, wait a minute. Did this happen in Phoenix or in. It happened LA. in Phoenix. Phoenix is actually a kidnapping capital of the nation as well. Stop it. It is, Not yeah. It's 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 kind of scary to think about how some of these very innocuous and normal places are where these like huge human trafficking distribution centers are and it's Yeah. It's horrifying. And I mean That is so crazy. And this was probably in like t- like 1999 or 2000. Mm. Yeah. And I, the fact that she was able to escape, escape that is pretty remarkable cuz I mean to to do that with help is one thing. It's hard enough, but to do it by yourself is I mean, that's miraculous. Yeah, that's it's an it's an insane story, and it's really like more bad for the family because the mom ended up getting cancer, like like maybe ten years later, and passing away. Wow. So that family, I just feel terrible for. I'm not even sure like they were still in contact with them, but my mom worked with the mom, and she was my the daughter was my babysitter at one point. Wow. And life life is crazy, you know. So that's why I try to stay grateful. I can't believe that. That's so crazy. And you were a normal kid too. People just like us. That, yeah, that shit happens. Yeah, one one little slip up with some new technology, with some new chat room. But you know what I mean? Like no yeah. one even knew what they were doing. Right. And they Except did those it. guys, I guess. Right. I mean, I'm sure they still do that too. They oh to. yeah. Um. So when all this is happening, you are like super young, mm-hmm. right? But you understand what's going on. Uh, how did your mother react to that? Like, did, did things change with you? Like, were you, uh, you know? So actually, when I was that age, I didn't know what happened. Like, nobody told me at that time. I learned. My mom told me the story way later on. Oh, okay. Because I knew I knew that she stopped babysitting me, but I was happy because I was embarrassed about having a babysitter. The, and about the time I threw up, oh. I was embarrassed. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to. 
I because she was like attractive. I was like had a crush on her because she was an older <laughs> chick, you know, you know, whatever. And uh, she was pretty too. And uh, yeah, I was super embarrassed by that. So when so when like she stopped showing up, I was kind of like, yes, like yeah. I didn't know why. Yeah, I had no idea. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, but you were just happy that she wasn't there to fucking yeah, be embarrassed. I felt yeah. like a vulnerable, like embarrassed. I feel like that kind of concept is a really like difficult thing to grasp at, at, at a young age. I remember being 12 years old in, um, in Morocco and I had, I had some, some cousins that were women. Uh, and one of them was like 16, 17 at the time. And we were in, um, one of the open marketplaces in a bigger city at night. And I remember my uncle (laughs) sitting me down and saying, look, you know, you you always need to hold your cousin's hands. Right. And if anybody is ever looking at them for too long or if you don't see them oh for gosh. a minute, you need to you need to tell us. Right. Um, and I was like, What what is he telling me? Like, we're just out having a fun time, getting some street food. And then like, you know, ten years later, fifteen years later, I, I remember thinking to myself, Oh my God, like Yeah. That could have been a very scary moment for them. Cause right. you know, they're in these packed crowds of people. It's very easy to lose someone. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. It's so messed up. Um, what did we just watch the other day? We watched that movie with Julia Roberts. Oh, uh, <sighs> something about the end, or yeah, the world is coming to an end, or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this movie was really good. It kind of freaked me out a little bit. And now that we're talking about kind of like technology things, mm-hmm. so we're talking about it because it's a story about what happens is uh we get cyber attacked, and so like everything gets shut off, internet. Uh, cell phone. Oh, it's over. TV, everything. Like you can't get in contact with anybody. TikTok is gone. Everything is gone. And so what they do is they no. use they and then they have control of all the electronics. So what they do is they also they'll control Teslas and they make the Teslas all crash so that way the 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 roads are all clogged. So they're making all the Teslas in like parking lots go and like clog cities. So that way people can't leave. I don't like that. It's too real. I drive a Tesla. Yeah, it was so messed up. It's such a good movie, though. Netflix, I you need to watch that. Is that what was happening? Was they were purposely making the Teslas? Yes, yes. Oh, my gosh, that's scary. Yes. I think he had a different take on it. Well, because it didn't, you couldn't really tell, but that was the whole thing. Because remember when it zoomed up and all the streets were clogged? Yeah. So, like, they were just trying to clog up the streets with the It was intentional, you're right. Yeah. I just wasn't piecing that. I was just thinking self-driving cars were just going down the road and meeting it in. But then again, it was all Teslas and they were all white. Yeah. It was like this. You're right. It was actually really good. Fuck fuck those Teslas. Hey. I know you have one, (laughs) but still, I mean, I just I just don't like him. The thing you should really be afraid of is is the fact that Elon Musk's baby ego. Well, (laughs) the fact that Teslas aren't so much a self-driving car, they're not here to disrupt the dealership industry. Teslas are actually a mapping software that is collecting not only data about where you're visiting, but how long you're there and why you're there and how long it takes you to get there. Like my car knows when it's time for me to come do a podcast with you. Did you know that? And it recommends like your it. address first on Saturday nights at 6.30 p.m. I don't like it. It's, it knows too much. It there's does. a lot of safety that can be coming that, but there's a lot of uh, overstepping, privacy invasion, uh, vulnerability at stake too <clears throat> it, it's true um there's a lot of different ways to take that opinion um i just i sacrifice my my own my own privacy for the sake of whatever so I'm yeah cool with it. oh look the, those are still there for me what, what is drinks? that <laughs> yes those are the same ones that you bought <laughs> oh dude those give me such a stomach ache every time <laughs> I was it like one. a smirnoff kind of it's beer worse beer. Yeah, I don't drink beer it's so sick sorry the trulies are yeah. good i'm a cerveza guy i'm a I'm a tequila cerveza guy. Are we rolling? Yeah, yes. we're rolling. Did you know that, uh, fun fact, without bats, I'm not sure if there's anything else that pollinates agave, but obviously agave makes tequila. Yeah. Bats pollinate agave. So without bats, we might not have tequila. Are you sh- really? Furthermore, that basically makes means I'm Batman. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> because I smashed tequila. Well, I did for a while. I stopped, though. Here, here's another funny thing that is like... <laughs> An interesting segue from that is one of the reasons we have such good tequila companies in Austin, even though you can't legally have a tequila, right. it's kind of like, you know, champagne mm-hmm. almost, right. um, 
is because we have one of the largest bat colonies in the United States. That's true. Oh, really? I, yeah, I the bat that. bridge. It's even like even oh, like in thing. Texas, you're saying? Yeah, in I Austin. Think in like in all Texas. of the states. Yeah. yeah. Like our I mean, bridge, like the Congress bridge, has like you guys should be able to make tequila. Them. That's stupid. Round Round Rock now too. I think too. it's yeah. called So Tall. No, that's or just sell the pollinated so agave to Mexico. Well, yeah. yeah, you have to manufacture tequila in Mexico for it to be tequila. Right. Otherwise, it's but what about the agave? Tequila. The agave? Yeah. What about the can agave? Can it grow anywhere? Or yeah. Does it can have to we grow in Mexico? You can you can grow the agave anywhere. It's just when it's and then give it to Mexico, Mexico and then let them. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah. Okay. It's sure. like champagne Semantics. and champagne, you know. Just let us know, you know, which... Parmesan and Parmigiano Reggiano. <laughs> yes. E- every country's got to have their own little. It's got to have their thing. own thing. I suppose. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the topic at hand. Like, I'm tired of your life. I'm tired of talking about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we're gonna get to the Forever. fun part. <laughs> I'm just gonna sense it. Boring. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> So uh, you started your OnlyFans, which is really good. And uh, when you first started it, did were you expecting it to go like really big, fast, or were you like knew that it was going to kind of take its time, or what, what? How did it? How did it go? Um, I didn't really have an expectation because I knew that there's a, there's a high volume of people out there that kind of went that route and embarrassed themselves, so to speak, in a way. <laughs> yeah. Which from the get go, you shouldn't be doing OnlyFans. We'll say if you're someone who feels like you might get embarrassed. Right. You know what I mean? Like, well, Yeah, because everything's going to be out there. Yeah, at least if you're doing OnlyFans, like, you know, like what I'm talking about. Right. Because there's OnlyFans tutorials for other things and whatnot, I'm sure. But Yeah, but this is the adult sexual. Right, adult content creation OnlyFans right. category. You right. should be in check with yourself if you're going to do that. You right. know, it's on you. You're, you're, no one's making you do it. Right. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like that. Did you have a hard time getting to that choice? Like, did you have a hard time thinking about that when you first started? Like, was that one of your worries? So part of the reason I would say no to that and also part of the reason I would say I decided to do it was I actually did have someone leak photos of me online to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think someone got a hold of my iCloud. Maybe. Oh, and like- I think it might have even just been someone random, like, at a, at a phone store or something. Who knows? You're right, right, right. But I'm not positive on how exactly it happened, but I did have someone leak photos of me to people I knew personally. So they sent them to them? Sent yes. them to them? Yeah, yeah. Well, they posted them on my stories. Oh, shit. So that where followers could see it. Wow. Was this one of those things like, if you don't pay me $500 by midnight, all your loved ones are going to see your cock? Yeah. And it was like a real threat instead of the hollow one? No one ever directly threatened me about it. They tried to do it behind my back in a way. Oh. Because I wasn't frequenting Instagram as often, I think. Right. And they tried to uh, secretly hold control of my account and expose me in a way, I would Jeez. say. So these things, so these pictures go out and what happens? Uh, eventually, I had a friend, a close friend of mine that I grew up with. It was really awkward in a way because he's a guy that I've known since I was like six years old. And right. we were even like teammates in sports at one point. Right. And we've gone our separate ways right. I mean, you get since older, high yeah. school and stuff. But we've always like stayed in contact and we hang out every now and then and he's doing really well by the way. But uh he messaged me and was like, Bro, like, what's going on with your with your Instagram, dude? Like, <laughs> what what are you doing? And I was like, What are you, what are you talking about? Of course. And yeah. it was kinda like he told me. And I was like, Oh, that's lovely, Great. you know. And at first I was like, I wanted to like find out who did it, and I was like, "Oh, I'm, yeah, you know well, what I mean." Yeah, you're gonna get. But then it was just kind of like, well, "What is that gonna do?" You know, like where am I gonna? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's only gonna make me look more foolish, right? You know, and just it was, bring more attention to it. And it's kind of one of those things where you just play like the backhand, where it's like I'm flattered that you would really even tr- try to go to that length for right. me. You know, like I don't even know who you are, right? And you're, put, you're putting all that time and effort. You know? And it was kind of one of those moments in life where you just allow yourself to grow from it in a way, I guess. Right. And see things in, a, in another way, even though it was almost, in a way, like, forced upon me. Right. So that's when you kind of decided, like, okay, fine. It's already out there. Um, you know, I, I if I don't give a fuck who sees it, just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. Yeah, well, and it was kind of just one of those things where it was like, you know, the same people who saw this 
who would who would maybe think about going the direction of like trying to make fun of me for it mm -hmm. are the same people that I would classify as people who have cried out for empathy for those sort of things. Yeah. Right. And so it's like go ahead and go ahead and show your true colors then. Right. You're the, the you're the asshole. Right. Right. So you know what I mean? so speaking of assholes, um one of the things that we had been talking about also was your asshole. Right? And um I don't know if you heard that the little drum symbols. <laughs> Thank you for that, Patrick. Yes. So anytime. <laughs> The reason I'm coming to this story is because we had talked well, the first time you were here, we kind of talked about what was on your OnlyFans and, you know, what you would do, what you won't do, mm -hmm. you know, what things you could pay for or whatever. And I was like, oh, I said, do a lot of people ask you about your ass hole? Mm -hmm. And you were like, yeah, they do. But what do you, what do you think of your asshole? I do have a butthole pick on my, <laughs> on my OnlyFans, one or two. But this is the thing. This is the thing. <laughs> I like when I took that picture, I kind of like sucked in a little bit <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm not even making this up right now. <laughs> He's not I, making this up. Okay. I'm going to start from the beginning with this story. Okay. <laughs> this is the. <laughs> like I'm building suspense. <laughs> yeah. This is the asshole story. Are you supposed to push out when you take the photo? No. <laughs> right. That's well, exact good point. Exactly. Okay. Zach, just ask if. You're supposed to push out, so hold on. We're gonna get to this story, well, Zach. So, so hold on. It, this That's brings up point. like a really interesting little thing too, because um, I don't know about y'all, but when I was like starting to send nudes as a as a as a guy thing. courting yeah. people, uh, I was never sure if I should be flaccid or hard. Is who who's gonna like what? You know, we'll get back to that. The after opinions that. vary. Anyway, yeah, yeah, we had. Let's start from the back, and then we'll move to the front. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so let's I'm gonna start from the beginning. Start from the very, start from the very beginning. Okay, all right. So like, I was born when I was 16. <laughs> I tore my hamstring sprinting, and that's what kick, kicks off this story. Is from there we're gonna jump to, we're just gonna fast forward like five years. I had compensation issues with my body pulling too hard on one side, and I was training martial arts, and it was hurting for me to throw a kick with my left leg, right. and I tore my right hamstring, and then I went to the doctor and found out that my it was causing a pelvic shift because I was pulling more with my left side of my body than my right side of my body due to my hamstring being torn. And it was starting to fray my hip labrum. Right. On my left side because my hip was slightly shifted. Right. So the it was only colliding way with the labrum. Can, yeah. And the only way they can fix this. So they decided my option was to do an arthroscopic hip surgery where they go in with a tiny tool yeah. and they, uh, they repair any damaged labrum if needed, which luckily they didn't because it was only frayed. But then he also, they took a tool and they like smoothened out my femur bone perfectly round on the surface because he said I had like a slight squared off edge to my femur bones. Weird. And so he said that they they rounded this one perfectly on this side. Uh-huh. And uh, so it rolls through smoothly. Right. And, uh, and then he like gave me some uh, advice in physical therapy to repair my labrum that was slightly frayed. So wait, wait, wait. So go back to... Well, so this he is tells, what happened. Yes. This is what happened is I went in for the surgery and they told you not to eat. Like you're, you're not like, supposed to eat before surgery. Yeah, you got to fast. And I ate an Egg McMuffin. Because the bitch was hungry. I was th I was hungry and oh. I was like, whatever. Like I was, I was like 19. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I was sedated and he told me that they had to use extra medicine because of my, my blood sugar or my. Pressure. Yeah, my blood pressure because of how, because I ate. Uh -huh. And so they sedated me. So I was out for like almost 30 minutes longer than I was supposed to be. It was part of it. But also I was laying flat the whole time and my body was relaxed from being sedated. Uh -huh. That the egg McMuffin settled in my stomach like a pancake, like a, like a discus. <laughs> a guys, I, guys, I shit out a discus the next morning. <laughs> and it hurt so bad. Like it was like, it was like no other pain. It was like a... <laughs> It was like a, uh, like, I can't do anything but this right now. Just go, ah. Uh. It was so bad. I mean, I mean I've mean, i heard of shitting a brick, but not a disc. <laughs> no. It was so bad. And, and, I, and wait, so, so I asked him, I said, it was a disc? I said, how do you know it was a disc? And so he said, you looked. Yeah, I looked. You're supposed to look at your poop. You make sure everything's okay. Right? I guess. I looked. You should. You should. You should. And I, I, I make a glance. I'm not gonna be like. Go go eat Bob some beats like, okay, and right. then look at your shit and tell me you don't 
flip the fuck out for a second. You know that? It's, it's, it's the same with like corn elotes every time I have that. Yeah. And it's just a bunch of fucking yellow shit in my car. <laughs> oh wait, my God. Terrifying. So, so wait, so wait. So you look in the toilet. And I was like, okay, that that makes sense. But I mean, yes. I was still looking at it like, I mean, that did hurt so bad, but how? You know, then I was like, and I mean, and I looked in the mirror, not the same uh, game anymore there. Different thing going on. It's so different. So that's why you me. I'm not kidding. I know you're not. So he's like They didn't say that They just said Look don't eat Before the surgery They didn't tell me like It's gonna fucking Tear your asshole <laughs> Dude As a cautionary tale To anyone out there now For the love of God Don't eat before surgery Don't eat before surgery And I'm not going To the doctor To be like Hey Cause you know yeah. They're just gonna be like Right Yeah can that's what happened my, Can y'all look at my asshole Real quick <laughs> You know what I mean You can't I don't, go to the doctor I'm not going to the doctor Dude I'm living like this now <laughs> It's just so, the way it's gonna be. That's the way it's gonna be. So I told him because the last time he was here, the whole so no butthole pigs. Yeah, he got mad yeah. because the last time he was here, I was like, okay, I said, let's go ahead. You want to do any butt pigs, like asshole pigs? And he's like, no, we're not gonna do pigs like that. Triggered. <laughs> and then he did. Dude, my butthole's ugly, guys. He thinks it's ugly. I was like, no, it's bespoke. <laughs> Well, like, most people that have an ugly butthole, you know, no, it's no offense. I don't judge, but I'm saying. You're not a fan of what? Those type of photos. Yeah, but people want them. They're, want it's them. it's popular, you know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny that. <laughs> and I j- j- done my best. There's a couple on there, but like I said, <laughs> I sucked in. We can just Photoshop anyone on. Well, and I told him to. It'd be great. <laughs> I told him to. I you get like, a donor asshole. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I told him I was like, you're being <laughs> ridiculous right now because you're just looking at your you're being fucking dramatic and bodies. I'm not being I dramatic. Like, I bet you you have like this little petite puckered pink butthole, and you're like, I did at one point. <laughs> then I started with one. You with started the with muffin. one. <laughs> See how bad that sounds, up. though. <laughs> we're not sponsored we're like, by McDonald's, sh- by the way. No, we're. Like, they were like, sure, it was a disc. Like, yeah, sure, okay. That's what happened. Just That's like the discus, story. Dude. I think the more alarming thing here is that an egg McMuffin could turn into an asshole shattering Frisbee. <laughs> yes. It's like, I must have ate it fast, too, because it all went down and, like, perfectly. Like, it still wasn't sh- Realigned. <laughs> Itself. It recomposed itself in your <laughs> stomach. <laughs> Came out the same. It was actually just a prank by the doctor to shame you for eating. He's like, he's yeah. gonna learn. <laughs> yeah, let's just tear his asshole up. Let's that's, tear his uh, asshole. That's how you okay. Nope. Okay. So the asshole story is done. We're not. Gonna, we won't talk about it anymore. And we're all better people. We're all, yes, that was our public service announcement. All right. So I um, enjoyed it. I do. I love that story. <laughs> he, the first time I told him that story, he was dying. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. And he even told me to, don't you bring it up on that podcast. <laughs> we'll do it. It's fine. <laughs> well, to be fair, he brought it up. He's like so. three beers in, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so you're doing your OnlyFans, and something happens, and it changes after you do certain, take pictures with somebody, someone. Yeah. So absolutely, that's I Greg. saw you because you were doing your TikToks at the time, and that's how I, that's how I found you because oh, okay. you were doing those TikToks, and it was a the ding ding ding, ding. the fable, the, yeah. Sound. I think it's fable, right? Ding 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 ding. Yeah, that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. So um, <laughs> I reached out to you a couple of times, or I reached out to you, and it took you a while to kind of get back to me. I don't remember. Oh, it did. I'm yeah. so sorry about that. I just... No, it's okay. But I remember you were you were really scruffy though. Yeah, I was hippie out for a little bit there. When I first started TikTok, I had hair down to here. Yeah, I was landscaping and living on the Southern California coast, and I was just like, some days I was uh, jumping in the in the ocean to to, to clean up. Like yeah. I was like, just totally living that type of life, like on purpose. Yeah, yeah, That's not cool. not yeah. You know, I but respect then, that. Yeah. So then he came here, and. We hit it off 
really well because he's so fucking funny. And um, we were going to do a podcast then, but we didn't because we just ran out of time, which is why we're doing it now. Um, so what what kind of changed after you after we did pictures? Oh, I got so, I got so much more attention on OnlyFans from that, and uh, you really changed my whole outlook on the possibilities from doing this type of work too. I want you to know you really, I've learned a lot from you already, Carlos. And uh, there's been like just so much inference and like ideas that have come out of this. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's been pretty awesome to do this so far and you do amazing work, by the way. I would, I would have not even like known where, what to expect or anything. Right. But like now that I've been kind of like involved in, in the industry, so to speak, yeah. slightly for a second here and kind of looked around a little bit i can honestly say i'm really impressed with your work even beyond mine you know like i follow zach on instagram is he's got a rocking page you know pal yeah I'm sorry if I don't follow you. no you're fine it's all good i mean we're just meeting so i just knew that i was going to meet you so i wanted to follow you and i you got a cool page man and you know you're a big part of that and i know you've helped pal out too as well and i see you guys posted on his page too you guys all have cool content and i'm really impressed man well and i'm glad that it kind of went up with you because i think you're a really cool guy and i'm, I'm glad that um more people started recognizing you a lot yeah. and i'm and i'm also happy that you got inspired to want to model model actually yeah. which is honestly what we what we did today uh, the past two days is we just took a bunch of like kind of fashion looking model model i am developing shots. a new passion for this absolutely this has become like really fun right and i kind of told you too like how um now you know how a photo shoot's supposed to be. So when you're in a situation where it's not like that, you're going to know that it's not supposed to be like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate you for that as well. Like you definitely shown me, you know, a great service. So to be professional. Um, so now with the future of your OnlyFans, um, I know that this, this week we're going to be doing a bunch of group pictures with all the guys and everything. So we, mm -hmm. um, you're going to do a little bit more of a collaborative, uh, collaborative work. But That's awesome too. Yeah. But your you know, OnlyFans, awesome. your OnlyFans is only you, right? There's not really um, yeah, collaboration, I have like, so to speak. I have a few, I have a few, but it's very much just me. Like out of out of probably like 600 pieces of content or whatever it is, right? Um, that I have on there through photos and videos, I maybe have a handful. I maybe have like five or six of the posts where I'm involved with someone else, and it's people in my group. It's people yeah. like Bryce and Kyle. Uh, I'll say their names. I'll give shout out to Steven Stem Jr., um, to Cole Anthony, uh, Zorro Hub. Right, right. Um, these guys, I don't have a collab with Zorro Hub on my page. I think I might have one with him and Bryson on Fansly. Yeah. They have Fansly accounts, which I don't. I run only fans only. But, um, and so far, have the, have the subscribers been pretty cool? Yeah, absolutely. Every I love everybody that I interact with. No one's been disrespectful or anything. Um, I tell people they shoot the, uh, their requests over whatever they want and I'll let them know. And I do custom pay-per-views as well. Same thing sold separately. And we always negotiate on the price right. going, you know, beforehand. So I, I want people to know also that like, you know, the money that you make from this isn't like you're, you know, buying PS4s or, you know, no, no the money that you're making from this goes to. Yeah. My life, my responsibilities, you know, I yeah. mean, I'm trying, I'm kind of learning. I think I value just as much. I value the learning process, the networking and, you know, everything going along with it, with it. Yeah. So it's not necessarily, at least at this point, it's not necessarily like about money or like a huge money thing for me. Right. But, you yeah. know, but you do, you, I mean, go ahead. Sorry. I was like, so like knowing that you went from like sports to like, social media basically do you approach it with like the same mindset of like how you get it done mm, i, I would I think, say he does though because I, i'm saying like when i watch him he's very task like he's doing stuff all the time like with for his stuff like i feel that's one thing that i've noticed about you is you're very regimented and you're like okay i need to do this day i need this day i need this day yeah in that way you could say yes and uh, i've kind of learned that from the group as well but you could say maybe that i'm used to doing that but I would say in a lot of ways, I'm very different than I used to be. When I was an athlete, I had a lot of expectation and I had a lot of, and I feel like that was good for me as an athlete in a way. But I also feel like in regards to life in general, I was a little bit too strong in that direction. And it was a little bit of like a, 
imposing, entitled maybe person. Right. When I was a little bit younger and coming out of sports. And uh, I, you know, what? I, this is kind of funny, but I was telling you this the other night. I kind of lived my life off of, a, I'm a Star Wars nerd in a way. And I kind of came to learn and live my life off of a, a quote from Master Yoda <laughs> um, that has served me well over the past probably half a decade at least. Uh-huh. Uh, it's from episode three when Anakin uh, foresees Princess Leia's death. He goes to Master Yoda to talk to him about it, and he's like infuriated. And Yoda tells him, attachment leads to jealousy, the shadow of greed, that is. And then he says something along the lines of, you must train yourself to let go of everything you fear to lose afterwards. Right. And so basically what he's saying there, at least from my perception, is, you know, don't have expectations. You were born into this world against your own will. You know, none of this is yours. Like, you should be grateful for what, Ever's there and not be attached to an idea because it's going to lead you down a path of discontent. Right. Right. I think, I think there's a, there's a very valuable um, sort of component that comes directly after that, that isn't necessarily Star Wars related, but it, it's, it's the, it's the same. It's like the secondary measure of that idea, which is um, to seek joy in the things you do, uh, which doesn't mean, you know, just go out and have a fun time all the time. It means, um, if you're going to work for something, it needs to be something that's going to bring you joy. Mm-hmm. And um, from kind of what we've learned about you in the past hour that we've been talking about, the various places you've been in your life, it seems like you've kind of learned to separate yourself from these these attachments and accept that this is a, a, a ever-moving world around you and to just seek the joy within it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're not in control. This isn't your... Just in your wheel. <laughs> yeah, just go with the flow. And it might be that. your hands for now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, type thing. Um, well, so we've, we've talked a lot today. We've touched on a lot of subjects, a spectrum, so to speak, of subjects. Yeah. Um, so we still have about four more days together. Uh-huh. Yeah. Awesome. It's going to be fun. We're going to get a lot of stuff. So Having a blast so far. Um, if you guys want to follow George uh, on Instagram, um go follow him. You can look at my Instagram and I have him on there a lot and you can go to him. I would give you his at, but I don't remember if it's, I don't remember what it's it is. George jungle jungle spelled with two G's. And then it's an underscore at the end for Instagram. So George jungle underscore underscore. I'm sorry. This whole time I thought that they were just making a joke about George in the jungle. Oh yeah. Cause they were whenever like, we're talking name? about your like, name George the jungle. and now knowing that it's that's a, bit a of part a of your actual handle. That's just, I love it. So I much. wish I was Brandon Fraser. That's the we'll just say that. <laughs> I mean, have you ever thought Sorry, about bringing back the long yeah. hair and School going ties. for a George the Jungle kind of scene? Yeah, but living in Arizona with that long hair is not the same. Oh, I was in Southern brutal. California and it was uh, nice. working, but not, not, not the, in Arizona. the best weather in the world is supposed to balls ass hot all the time. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I totally get it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so I'll have him on there. Um, and that way you guys go and, and follow him. Uh, so thank you for talking with us today. I appreciate it. Thank you. It. Thank you, you know, guys so much. We'll definitely do it again. Reach on some other stuff. Um, that was fun. But yeah, definitely. If you guys want to follow him, I say go follow him. He answers all his messages. So anyway, thank you very much. We'll see thank you guys you. later.